What's up? I see you there. Walking in here, thinking you're looking too good today. Thank you for stopping by. This is, you guessed it, your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of October 1st. Spooky month. This is one of your co-hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me virtually. The ghostly ghost, Alex. It's funny because I was literally about to say, I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost! Alex, if you had to give yourself a spooky name, what would it be? This is a popular trend on Twitter. If I had to give myself a spooky name? Yeah, I I think the easiest is like Alex Van Helsing or something like that. I feel like you can get something along along those lines. Or something, maybe. I see. I'm going to stick to that. I like that. Dracula Alex? No, that doesn't work. No. Draculix? Draculix? No. No. I was going to say Alexcula? No. Fuck. I, I don't think I have one. Nothing really goes with Elijah. Right? Frankenstein? Eli- no. Frank? Frank Elijah? No. No. If you have one, shoot at Twitter. I'll cha- if, if it's good enough, I will change my name on Twitter. For the month of October, if it's good enough, a spooky Elijah name. Like, you know, mix it in with another name. Or, or, or if it's spooky enough by itself, I'll take it. But I don't think there is one. I don't think there's a way to make my name my name spooky. Elijahstein? That's close, but it feels forceful. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. I like it, but it feels force. It feels like it's forcing it. It's not natural. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Alex Van Helsing, I feel like it's very flowful. Maybe... No, yeah, no, I think that's as good as it gets, Alex Van Helsing. How about, it's not, I don't know if you count it. See if you can know it. Elijah, Elijah Card. Okay, Elijah Card. Eli Card. Elicard? Elicard. 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 Sounds like a. Copyrighted. Elicard sounds like a, like a British treat. Like like they like they make it at tea time at Elicard. You want some Elicard, ma'am? That's what it sounds like. Right. Alex, do you celebrate Halloween at all in your oh, household? Uh, yes. How heavily is it? Like a nor- Like are you an average um, American or? Like I, no matter how old I am, I always want to find something to to be mm. on Halloween, and I, I still love the whole candy thing. Like. The last couple of years, I haven't been able to do the trick or treating thing, okay. even though I'm, you know, I'm over 20 years old. Um, <laughs> uh, just to clarify, like, you mean you going to a house to get candy, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I would still like to do so, even though that looks like kind of weird. Yeah. But I have a kid now, so I take a guy can get away with it and just, and, you know, just keep the candy. Mm-hmm. Give him a cake, I the candy yet. Um. But um, by the way, it's, year, it's super weird. Home. Parents get a, get a get away with that. They'll have just a infant yep. in a costume walking around, and they'll get what candy. It's like this this child isn't eating the candy. Look, what do you think I was gonna do? But because this, this damn COVID, I can't do shit. Hey, you could do it. You just have to. You, it, now this is a debate too. If if uh, Halloween's actually gonna happen, I'm not. Of course, I'm not saying mm-hmm. you do it. I'm saying like um, people are are apparently leaving bowls out. That just seems like it's begging. Like for trouble, right? Like just leaving a bowl of candy. And see that I was going to do that. I didn't see it. Like I don't know mm. because I was going to leave a can uh, a bowl of candy, but I'm not gonna put the whole bowl so they don't. Know everything. Maybe you like, can ration it out. Well, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna do a little, like maybe yeah. like, instead of having the whole bowl of ha- a full, I was gonna do half a bowl. Keep an eye on the kids and see if they. <laughs> <laughs> if they too much and then it's just slowly I'm just, pic- more. I'm just picturing you sitting there with a kimbo stick like if you take more than one <laughs> like you just right there ready to well, swack them in the face well my grandpa gave me um these two witches that he had that uh, animatronic and one of them's a headless wife and the head is being held up by the hands and i can and Jesus. it actually moves and it moves and makes noise so i want to put them up and see what happens in like if the kids see those jesus alex <laughs> that sounds terrifying <laughs> cool i mean i'm sure they'll like it just um yeah. you know sounds Look, absolutely so far, terrifying. last two years uh I've, I've been known in the neighborhood to have go all out for halloween and christmas 
Yeah, once you get the reputation, you can't stop it, right? No, like, you're the guy. Now you're right? the guy. Yeah, no, I am the guy now. So, like, everybody always comes to the house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, my dream to eventually, when I have my own house in place, is to be the the candy guy that gives out the full-size candy bars. Oh, for sure. I'm going to be the guy. I, I will. But that's 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 a long ways away. But don't worry. We're here until then. We are the Easy Chavers Game Podcast, where we come to you with the newest news you need to know every single Friday. Yes, Friday. That is where we're going to be. You go to YouTube or a podcast service of your choice and or liking. Give us a little listen. You come every single Friday. And if you like us even more than that, don't worry. We have a way you can support us, keep us you know, on, basically. Without you, we would be nothing. Patreon.com slash CG Achievers. You give us a dollar. Keeps us. Mike's on, right? Uh, Mike's on, lights on. Alex's dogs continue to stay alive. On that note, Alex, I want to jump into some news. Now, not a huge news week, but there is one huge news story we could cover, correct? This is, of course, what everyone is wanting to know. Xbox series x a giant preview from literally everywhere around the internet has gone out there are several places you can find multiple looks at interviews and such and such as of specific details on the system right now we're just going to go over the things you need to know specific about the system we're going to talk some details we're going to say what we like maybe what we dislike but i want to start off with something very easy something we all know load times Load times apparently are being cut in half, seemingly almost across the board. For instance, Red Dead Redemption 2 on a 1X takes about 2 minutes and 8 seconds to load. That is down to a whopping 38 seconds on the Series X. That is almost a full minute and a half breaked off. And of course, we see even better load times in some smaller games such as Control, seemingly 58 seconds on a full load time on an Xbox One X, drop down to a flashing 10 seconds on a Series X, and then we find Final Fantasy 15 and Outer Worlds clocking around 10 seconds load time, whereas they took almost a minute on each system comparably on the One X. So, Alex, incredible. Easy to digest, just simple seconds immediately into it's the game. Not- to me that like it could it can be that dramatic of a change yeah i mean i know pc players have been used to ssds but we're i mean the this is a whole nother level of ssds on consoles right we're fine mm-hmm. we're basically in a whole new world um mm-hmm. basically aladdin over here we're in aladdin now a whole new world and we're experiencing these l- literally lightning fast low times even quicker if you factor in quick resume now if you don't remember what quick resume is this is essentially a loading feature in established on the series x that was also up for preview and a few people looked into it so essentially you bring in a system that is or sorry a video game that is currently loaded and you can basically pause the game switch over to another game so for instance i wanted to play some control i i open up control start playing a few minutes i remember i'm missing um i'm missing the dlc of outer worlds i want to go try out the outer worlds dlc real quick i can switch to outer worlds go start the dlc if i want to take a break from that i go back to control it has saved where i am in that game to where i can immediately start once i come back there is no load it is just a full quick resume immediately starts where i left it and you keep going quite incredible I'd say. I think of it as um, as in PC, uh, you like minimizing the, the perfect analogy. I feel Alex. The thing. Perfect so analogy. Like, You're essentially minimizing whatever is going on and picking program, up something yeah. else. Yeah, it quite incredible. You can do that. Uh, I believe they're going for six times when the game launches. I think the preview unit they can only do four though, if I remember correctly. Okay, because I thought it was five, but might, maybe they could go six. Might maybe. be. But I, th- I thought I, I heard it was six, and then with the preview units, they can only do four. That's and, still nuts. I mean, who who's playing four games at a time? Alex, I feel called out for that. You know I do that. 
<laughs> now let's get into some storage talk now in a full usable ssd you have an availability of 802 gigabytes of usable space everything missing out of the one terabyte is of course left up to the os and system files that is of course unfortunate but that is just a reality we are being uh, missing about 300 ish gigs of actual space for the actual system to run um Sucks, but understandable. A uh, eight hundred hopefully keeps game like hopefully the games are a little lower when these games come out. Um, I can see that being used almost before the year ends. Um, if you know storage uh, games don't go lowered, Alex, what do you think about this? Say that. Say that again. Um, the eight hundred and two gigabytes. Oh yeah. Um, I mean. I feel like that's going quick, right? Maybe the games get lowered in file size. I will. I was about to say. I hope because I mean that that I mean imagine Call of Duty is a hundred gigs. That's one game right there gone. Yeah. Imagine each game being a hundred gigs. I mean that's only eight. Yeah. Games. One. Yeah. One eighth of your storage is gone from yeah. one game. So that is pretty incredible. And then of course, this is a friendly reminder. I say this probably too much, but if you have a USB storage device, you can still use it. You just cannot run the game. You cannot run the game, but you can use it. So, for instance, if I want to play Control, I can store it on my um, USB in external device, mm -hmm. but I cannot play it from there. It will play the backwards. Um, but you can, um, for instance, play backwards compatible versions. So you can play an Xbox One version of a game off of your device, but it will not receive the benefit of an SSD. And I highly recommend you avoid not playing on your internal storage because it is lightning fast. But you can play a last gen game on your current uh, uh, current gen system being the Series X. And then, of course, you can buy that very pricey Seagate expansion card, 220 for a terabyte additional. I think it, it gives you a full terabyte as well. So. No, no cut off on that, but good lord. 220 for a terabyte of storage. Insane. Insane. I'm just going to go quickly over uh, some games we're excited about. Warzone, his cut from the 21 seconds to 16 seconds. Nothing crazy, but this is a small, small upgrade. Um, Seas of Thieves sees a complete minute takeoff uh, starting only 20 seconds on a Series X. Um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey sees a full 30 seconds cut off, only loading in 30 seconds now. And then Destiny 2, taking about two minutes to load, only 43 seconds. Incredible. Goodness. Incredible. I'm very excited for that. Now, there was a very niche thing. This is from Nebelian. There's a very niche thing, but how, let's say, for instance, how long it takes to move a internal to external drives. Those roughly take a few um, minutes. That is just out there few minutes four minutes for an internal to external uh to the ssd internal to external hsd though of course goes up to 10 minutes so of course if you use an ssd the times to transfer will be much quicker will be much quicker um just tidbit knowledge the uh button you press to turn the system on um it does make the exact same noise as the xbox one x which if i'm being honest kind of disappoints me because i like new news noises but <laughs> but i i guess they didn't feel like going in the effort of changing the noise but whatever um apparently it's very heavy it's almost nine pounds so it feels like you're just holding a giant baby i mean it's just as close as the x the x i think was 8.4 yeah i mean i think it's almost the exact same i think it's like i think it's 8.9 or something like that it's 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 it's, it's, it's heavy <laughs> Um, apparently it's incredibly quiet from everyone I've read. They do not hear it. It is, uh, it is inaudible. Um, if uh, someone did a few tests, they could barely hear it running something as intensive as Red Dead 2. Uh, mm. Nothing is, is uh, anywhere near that quiet. I remember my One X getting pretty loud when it rode in Red Dead 2. Or anything that is uh, pulling in all the stops. For instance, Control. That, that was very loud as, as well. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. the new controller. Alex, are you excited for this new controller? I have my Elite version too, so I don't really care. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to give it a try because I, I, the the D pad will probably feel a little different. Mm -hmm. and the, the triggers will have, have that um, the grip on it or whatever. 
Yes, little, uh, yeah, the thing. grip on the back, the texture grip, and then the D-pad does look interesting. It does look optimized for everything from platforming to fighting games, which is exciting. This is why that's yeah, why I love yeah. the Series Two controller. Uh, it's because yeah, and I that... definitely want to see uh, how fast this share button thing is gonna work. Yeah, yeah like, like, screenshots and stuff. So I want to see if it, like if I hit it, the you know the, if I hit the button if it does it. It takes like way less time. Yeah, I've, if I remember correctly, in that video they showcased, I want to say two months ago now, when they just talked about what it would do. If I remember correctly, you can say what it does. So if you do it, it, it you can put it to where it just does a screenshot. Or yeah. if you hold it, it takes like a certain amount of time. If you hold it, it takes a, like 30 second video or whatever. Something or like that. Like I think that. you can make it do stuff. I might be making all this up. But reach out if you if you remember what we're talking about. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I think that's about it, Alex. Am I missing anything from what you've read about? I feel like that is basically everything covered here. Um, I think I could think of. I think you what are your overall it. thoughts? Of course, we're getting more and more coverage as the month goes on. This is, of course, October. The system is set to launch November 10th, so we are getting most likely a new little tidbit of knowledge about every week, if not every other week. Very exciting. Yeah. Alex, you a tired boy? You a tired boy? Man, look, no one wants to hear you. No one wants to hear your mouth on the mic. Look, I'm sorry. I've been mm. up since five thirty this morning. Mm. Baby takes a nap. I don't. <laughs> okay, moving on. Seems to be that PS4 saves will not be available on PS5. Uh, we were originally going to cover this. Um, I nixed it last minute because it is still very unclear what is happening with this. I'm very confused what the PS5 can play off your PS4. I do not fully understand. That is a huge problem they have to figure out. I am not figuring out on my podcast right now. But if essentially, I will give you a five-second buffer. PS5, some games will load. For instance, Spider-Man was confirmed to have a save transfer to your ps5 only miles morales okay so miles morales if you buy it on your ps4 for for whatever you know if you don't plan on getting a ps5 you that save will transfer to your ps5 i have zero idea of any other game but there you go that's what i know that is what i know sorry for not having more information but they ha- they didn't they don't make it easy for all this hassle and going on with this whole backwards compatibility thing, at this point, they should have just scrapped everything and just been like, PS5 is next gen only. No button, we're not going backwards, not get bringing anything forward. Just, it's all PS5. I mean, I feel like that's what they're trying to do because they're doing this garbage where they're like, it's 99% backwards compatible. And it's like, what does that mean, though? What is it? Like, will my save move? They don't answer that. So, assumably, no. 100% or I don't want it at all. (laughs) Only 100 or nothing. (laughs) If you're not unclear on how your stuff is going to work, then obviously it's it's not going to work well. And I, no. Right. I'd rather just not not be there and then frustrate me later. Right. Alex, for some reason, Amazon announced a cloud gaming service. We're going to talk about it right now. And it is called Luna. Amazon has launched their new cloud gaming service. We'll have 100 plus games powered by um, their cloud service coming for PC, Mac, Fire TV, iOS, um, of course, iOS is via the web, not through the App Store, and Android at some point. Five ninety nine a month as an introductory price, so of course it will probably go up to about ten ninety nine or nine ninety nine. There's a Twitch integration, a new controller that looks like a Pro controller, like the Stadia controller, as if like it looks like um, it looks like uh they fell off like a truck and Amazon and Google just walked over and grabbed a bunch of, of molds and used the used the controller as it. <laughs> um, there are gaming channels. There are gaming channels, so as far as I understand, you could pay for a channel. For instance, Ubisoft has a specific channel, and you get all of their games. So cool. That sounds cool. So I guess you buy the service, and then you buy the subscription, and then get the games. So you're. I assume there'll be games just on the service, but you'll also get the games through the subscription of other 
so what like, so sounds great Assassin's, <laughs> yeah, the Assassin's Creed game it's uh, included if you get the Ubisoft channel right so I'm assuming each channel um I honestly I feel like they'll say 10 50 I don't know like not, see my thing is I don't know if it's a one charge only a one charge or is it an added thing to your monthly thing to what the channels so, like, the channels, yeah. The channels yeah, will be added monthly. Alex, what what utopian you living in? You think you're getting ten dollars once for? I'm not saying, well, that's I'm saying it was t- it would be ten dollar monthly, yes, for the channel, or you pay, let's say, f- like fifty or sixty now, and then you and it's a one time fee. I'm assuming that's available. What do you mean, like that option? They, they, yeah, I assume there's two options: either you pay for the channel, or you just buy the games outright. And see, I don't. I don't. I feel like they only have the. You just add it into your subscription, and then it's the ten dollars more or whatever. So you pay if the thing is five ninety nine right now, and you add ten, it's fifteen bucks a month now. Amazon says more than a hundred games. This is via The Verge. Amazon says more than a hundred games will be available via Luna Plus channel, and launch titles include Resident Evil Seven, Control, Panzer Dragoon, Plague Tale Innocence, The Search Two, Ukulele, Grid, Abzu, and Brothers: Tale of Two Sins. Amazon says more titles will be added, quote, over time. The company has also partnered with Ubisoft for a specific, quote, gaming channel, end quote. And then here's how Amazon describes it. Players who subscribe to this channel will have access to the favorite YouTube, sorry, favorite Ubisoft titles in up to 4K resolution, mobile gameplay, and access to new titles when the channel launches, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry 6, and Immortals Phoenix Rising, the same day they release. This is the first of multiple Luna game channels in development where customers can play games from their favorite publishers and genres. What? <laughs> I, I guess I didn't really answer our question. I mean, it it says will be available via the Luna Plus channel. So I'm assuming the Luna Plus channel is what you pay for in the $5.99 subscription service, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, because you don't get it. Uh, you don't. Get there's it. no free version. Like, there's no free version. Yeah. So once you like pay Stadia. For it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, this is great. This is exactly what you want to do when you launch something, a service. You want everyone to wonder what it is. Anyways, we're moving on to um, a couple more details. There, the Twitch integration lets you instantly jump into games. So apparently, you'll be able to watch a Twitch game and you'll be able to literally click and jump into that game for for, of course i assume purchasing it um i remember youtube promised this uh sorry google promised this with uh youtube uh stadia integration that is yet to happen but if that actually happens that sounds cool um it looks like uh that is about it on details we know um the channels i think sounds cool it's a unique way of gathering different ips and games all at once for a flat fee that sounds interesting and it's a cool way because it um it makes names more known if that i'm not saying what i want to say correctly but essentially like you can you can now say i like ubisoft games and then buy just ubisoft games like that sounds cool like just that ability and knowledge of knowing that my crazy thing is, Uh-oh. I feel like this channel thing uh-huh. is trying to not saying compete, but is trying to get to the same level as what Game Pass is. Oh, of course, everyone wants a Game Pass. I, I, I think, um, I think Microsoft was very wise to jump in this early, because mm-hmm. um, clearly, it's clearly they're doing something right because Google and Amazon are all jumping in on this. Mm-hmm. So whatever reason, there some I'm sure someone's in the tea leaves at these stores saying hey the future is in cloud gaming we need to put money in it to diversify our holdings and shareholders blah 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 Mm -hmm. and they're getting it done they have amazon set theirs up stadia i guess still exists i don't know by the way did you see um (laughs) did you see that the new chromecast that won't support stadia why <laughs> it just it said it won't support stadia that's all it said it says uh it, until 2021 it won't support stadium uh, all right that would be like if series x didn't use game pass the first year it was out oh. stadia is dying <laughs> like that is incredible 
in this, this i've never been less believable in stadia more than that look stadia died the the day it launched that First is off, true it, it did it, like when i like the day it launched nothing worked apparently the service works for some people but I, I think it goes to the same problem like if you have fast amazing internet yeah it's gonna work well but how many people have that and how easy is it to navigate and get on it's just it's yeah, I don't know, it's too much but i digress moving on alex minecraft steve is joining smash brothers today nintendo announced a minecraft addition to the roster Yes, Minecraft Steve, nonetheless, is coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Steve joins the giant roster of characters. Uh, apparently, Steve will also be able to transform into Alex, Zombie, and Enderman. So, of course, our one and only Easy Achiever, Alex, will be able to be a Smash Brother. If only Alex, was Alex, how was that mocapping for Super Smash Brothers? Did you and meet Kirby? Did Look, you did you meet very, Kirby? I I can't I can't specify no details. Mm, okay. Um, but I could tell you that I was ve- I felt very blocky. That's hot. Anyways, mm-hmm. Alex apparently is the female version of Steve in quotes. That was the, I think that was the first female skin added to Minecraft. Mm-hmm. But Steve, Alex, Zombie, and Enderman are being added to the game. All the same character, but different versions of the same character. Apparently. These are, uh, Nintendo usually does a huge dump of info when they announce new characters, but they have left every new details out. They will announce more on a later date, um, seemingly the DLC date and more information of the characters. All we know is that Minecraft Steve is in the game. Uh, cool. Uh, I, I, I have yet to get on there to play the second oh, dude, I need to go back. yeah i need to go back too i have yet to get on there to play the second wave of people starting with the arms character and steve um but i'll probably jump on there and buy it for steve just to mess around and see how they did that because that sounds cool yeah i honestly haven't played much of my switch because my wife is taking over with animal crossing how dare she um um i did take it back though when the mario collection came out i've been playing sunshine is that fun yes okay fun. cool 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 alex We can't add too much to the Super Smash Brothers, so we're just going to move on to what's probably the weirdest story I've covered in a very long time. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered Detail. This is over on the PlayStation blog. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is this weird? It's just going over what the remaster is. I'm going to read a current excerpt from the PlayStation blog, and I'm going to try and not laugh. So, here we go. They're, I'm going to jump right into halfway through the article. They're basically talking about different things that's being upgraded, certain environments, certain characters, and things like that. I'm going to jump in the halfway point. But it is not just the environments. Our characters have gotten a huge upgrade from higher fidelity skin, eye, and teeth shaders to individually rendered strands of hair. The new tech and detail brings their characters and their performance to new life. This does bring us to one of the bigger changes. In order to bring the best performance to players with our next generation Marvel Spider-Man game, we have to recast the face of Peter Parker. We loved working with John Bubniak. Sorry if I butchered that on the original game. However, to get a better match to Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, actor Yuri Lowenthal's facial capture, we have to cast Ben Jordan to be the face model for peter parker on the ps5 console he looks incredible in game and yuri's moving performance take on a new life they insert a clip that you can watch it's a incredible scene from the game uh alex what are your thoughts (laughs) look i was i was just scrolling through twitter and i looked at it and i was like is that tom holland and i was like no so I started looking for the original picture just to see. I'm like, maybe they, maybe it's just more defined because I was like, uh, with the Miles Morales one, you know, his 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 character got like a, a up upgrade and it looks a lot better. So I was like, maybe it's just the same character, just a little better. Looked at the picture, it's a completely different guy. Completely different dude. So apparently, okay, so they recast the gentleman, right? Mm-hmm. Which I I will be honest, I had no problem with the other one. 
I liked his yeah. performance. He moved me incredibly. His acting was phenomenal from my point of view. Oh, for sure. But they changed him anyways. So we have a, I will be 100% clear with everyone. This is 100% a guy that looks like Tom Holland. <laughs> like there is no doubt about it in my head. I think they use that advantageously because there's no reason not to to capitalize on an MCU very popular Spider-Man icon to further your sales. Nothing wrong with it. The reasoning they gave for changing this was that this guy was a better match. That is a lie. I do not believe that. And maybe you can prove me some sort of point of view that maybe I am incorrect and I would love to be. But this seems like a lie. Maybe he was asking for too much money. Maybe he wanted a cut of the sales. Maybe the guy, they just didn't like working with him. But that I do not believe that for a second. <laughs> that is why they got rid of this. There is a reason. There is probably a good reason from their point of view to recast him. Um... But yeah, he looks completely different. This is going to get a lot of getting used to. I loved the last character. I liked his cool, messy hair. He has like the most styled hair I've ever seen in my life right now. So it's like kind of off-putting. Um, well, and, and it's not... And, and I'm not that guy about this. But I did think of a joke as soon as I saw the picture. I was like, damn. I didn't think Peter Parker could get more wider. But he did. Right here. I'm staring at him. White as hell. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I, it's hard for me to see that, okay, the Peter Parker that we had, you know, he's been Spider-Man already for a little while, so, yeah. so he's like, a, I'm assuming his mid-twenties. Um, and Miles Morales was kind of like, you know, on the teenager side. Now, it's complete opposite. The new Miles Morales looks a lot older than this Peter Parker. So, they broke down some of the reasoning behind this. So... I thought the Spider-Man from the first game was like 26-ish. I didn't re- I didn't remember. This was like a w- this was like a few days ago. I just couldn't remember. Okay. Apparently the Spider-Man we play as is 23. Okay. So he's tw- Excuse me, he's 23. Okay. So I guess with that context, the original Spider-Man we had did look a little older than 23. This does look like a 23-year-old man, I guess. Yeah. But he does look a y- uh, super young compared to Miles, if you understand yeah, what I mean by that. Like, he looks really young standing next to Miles. So, like, he he's supposed to be a mentor figure. Like, he, they look like they're the same age almost. <laughs> yeah. For and sure. I don't remember how old Miles is supposed to be. Isn't he supposed to, he's is He's graduating high school, right? I, mm, Why do I, I, think, I, I... I think he's either... I feel like he's between 15 and 18. That sounds right. Let me that's see. Un- that sounds right. That has to be right, uh, right? But but yeah, I I I'm not I'm not as negative as people were online. I honestly, at, hey, at the end of the day, I don't care. It's a great game. I'm sure his acting is gonna be fine. First off, the character model looks fantastic, especially compared to the other one. Because if there was one thing they didn't mold perfectly, was his face. Like if you uh, the original Peter Parker face model was not great. It was smoothed out. You couldn't you couldn't tell textures or details on his face or head. This one of course looks much better. Uh, it's remastered, so it does have a nice flair to it. So I get it, but it is ve- it's very off putting. <laughs> in in the PS4 game, he was 15. I'm assuming this is a Damn. year later. He's 15. Jesus. So he's 16 in the in the new Miles Morales. He game. did not look 15. Nope. I mean, to be fair... Now, I will be honest, do I stand around a high school and stare at a bunch of 15-year-olds? I don't. I haven't studied this age thing very radically, but he didn't look 15 to me. And she tells me, like, when I see things, I'm like, I feel like this kid's 20. And they're like, no, they're 13. What? Oh, that's dangerous, Alex. You can go to jail for that. Moving on. (laughs) Wow. You put me on a spot like that. (laughs) All right, moving on. Um... Ah, Alex, how are we covering the Bungie Microsoft thing? It's a mess. And it might not be true. I'm, you know what? I want to make a bet and I'm going to say that it's going to happen. Okay, so we've been hearing murmurs since, let's see this original. I've had this specific marker on here since September 14th. This was when Bungie Microsoft rumors were first going out. 
there are a lot of rumors going on that that Microsoft is trying to acquire Bungie. And we're hearing rumors, yes, no, maybe. We've covered it a few times on the show haphazardly. We haven't really brought up any stories. There was one that Alex sent me earlier that there's, there seems to be a position being filled that hints at an acquisition by Microsoft. It's a specific job title that is the same. How do I, how do I say this? Like, it's the same job title that has appeared in every acquisition Microsoft has done before. So, I think it was... What were the examples, Alex? I know Bethesda was one. Oh, God. Uh, uh, was it Rare? I think Rare was one. Yes. And Undead Labs. Undead Labs was one. They were just different, and they're all the same job title. They're called the same thing. Um, I yeah, think yeah. Direct, uh, Leader of Associates something. It's some garbage upper name that doesn't sound like anything. I just want to put out there it's a chance. Alex says it's happening. I'm in the fence. It could happen. I think it's less likely because we just got a giant $7.5 billion acquisition from Bethesda. So I do not think that's going to happen. Alex, you think it's happening? I will not sit here and pretend like they don't have the money to do it. I'm just saying it might not happen because they just agreed. Microsoft might be like, look, you just bought one. Right, like you're, you know, you're the kid at you're you're the kid at like uh, at the Walmart or toy store. Like, hey, can I have this toy? You're like, well, you look, you just got a toy last time. You, you can't get a toy every time. Look, it's gonna be in a, it's a different media, but tell that to Disney when they keep buying every fucking body. Disney's different. They own everything, and they're just gonna keep eating everyone. But see, why is if they can do it, why can't why can't Microsoft? Well, I'm not saying they can't. I again, I I reiterate, they can. <laughs> but I, I would does that make the most financial sense to them right now maybe maybe not i don't know because it's one of those things where you can just work out a deal to get like destiny because they already got them on game pass so like what else are they going to do they're not going to make destiny halo. exclusive so why would they <laughs> they're not going to make halo with bungie that would be that would be incredible after Destiny 2 and after they're all done, I feel like they're going to dabble back into Halo. That would be a long time after because they're working on another game with... um, Who was it? They, they, Destiny is still going to, what, 2022, right? Isn't it? Yeah, but they're making another game with... Um, I believe Tencent gave them a huge lump sum of money to make another game. So they're making something. Mm. It's, I forget the project name, but they're making something else. So... They they have a team working on that and they have a team working on all the Destiny stuff. So I mean, it's it could be sometime later after Infinite. We, we I'm just saying one day I'm calling in now. Bungie's gonna go back to Halo. I wanna. I don't when know. It, when it, that's when and when it, it, that's when it was in its prime, man. It needs to go back. That would be awesome if that does happen. I think I think it's possible. I do. I really do. I do think there's a reality where we see Microsoft walk up to Bungie, walk up to Luke Smith, and be like, "Hey, man, come back. We're gonna buy you out." They give him a figure. They go, "That's probably too much." They work on a few deals for a year or two, and then they boom, they buy him. Alex, if they buy Bungie, their studio will lineup will be absolutely insane. Yeah, absolutely insane. Alex, that's the newest nudes you need to know for the week. I want to end with a discussion because it wasn't too heavy of a, a week. So I want to end with a discussion we we topped on last week, but I want to see if it has changed your mind at all. Okay. I know everyone's probably tired of hearing about Bethesda this, Bethesda that, Xbox this, Xbox that, exclusive, exclusive. But I want to hear one more argument slash debate slash conversation. Will Bethesda games be exclusive to a Microsoft platform? Mm. Alex, go. Uh, only game specific. I feel like not ev- not the whole, not everything. So, Elder Scrolls Six is that game going to be Xbox exclusive on Game Pass only? I would want. I want to say yes. I will say yes. Fallout 5, 7, 88, whatever you want to call it. Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Are exclusive. Yes. Interesting. I am still hung up 
on the possibility that they open up Fallout slash Elder Scrolls to PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Say you can buy these two games for seventy dollars on this mm-hmm. platform, or you can do the smart logical thing: buy an Xbox, pay for Game Pass for only fifteen dollars. So the cost of one of those games buys you what? If mm-hmm. if you don't include Ultimate, seven months of Game Pass. It's one one purchase of it gives you seven months of Game Pass. Yep. I feel like that is a very tempting offer to Microsoft to leave them on PlayStation. No, I feel like... Um, I do not think that at the end of the day that's going to happen. Now, they have people fucking way smarter than us doing these calculations. So they know... they. I think they already know what they're going to do or they're in the process of deciding. Mm. Um, this like, title by title thing is... No, they're, they're, they're in the process of figuring out are they all exclusives or are they not? What makes us the most money and makes the most sense? Games will probably stay on Game Pass, in my opinion. Yeah. But I feel like the possibility of the PlayStation thing is there. Multi. I feel like they're trying to do multi where they give them the benefit of the doubt. So, like, you know, I'm assuming because so so, uh, PlayStation would have to, you know, give them money. So since they are, you know, they're getting the game on their system. But I don't feel like um, PlayStation is going to be like, uh, we don't want to do that. So <laughs> Xbox is going to be like, well, fine, then you won't get it. Hmm. And it becomes fully exclusive. I think I think if Microsoft came to PlayStation and said, do you want these games? They would say yes. Without a question. So we, without a, Even if they have to give them a share? Oh, yeah, of course. They won't have a choice. Because um, yeah, like, the only cut that PlayStation gets is the thirty percent off the sale. That's the point, yeah. Uh, they won't really have a choice in the matter. I feel they yeah, they I feel like they lose sales if they don't. And that's a lot of money they leave on the table. That's all the goodwill they're leaving too. Because you will, you know that decision is leaking. So mm-hmm. they wouldn't do that. And I think they would literally not do that in fear that them saying no will leak to somebody, and someone unless, and a, and a unless, Jason Schreier will cover it. Unless that is Xbox's plan is. Because it's not on PlayStation, they, then they're loose money. So that means uh, they have the the upper hand or whatever on, on Xbox side. I, I think I think they're sticking with Game Pass. I think they want people to sign up for Game Pass. No, for yeah. Right. I think that's I think at the end of the day that's the problem. That's that's why they bought Elder Scrolls Fallout, whatever you want to call them. I, I think Game Pass is literally gonna have everything. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Especially if they add Bungie to that, that would be insane. I mean, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, technically, it's all it's already there. Destiny's on there already. Yeah, Destiny is on there. That's why I'm I'm hesitant to say they'll buy Bungie because Destiny, they have the deal. So like, like why pay for it when you're already getting it? You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. It's a great question. I think I we will only know when these games get released. It's Starfield. That's another question. Is Starfield going to be on everything? No, right? I, I we still don't know what that game is, man. It's sci-fi. <laughs> That's all we know. We still I, we I still haven't like even I, heard I, about the game. I feel like that one's a multi-platform one. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. But you you keep the new IP because you can at least say uh, like when like when someone says you don't got it. Well, you can at least say hey, we have Starfield. Like that's that immediately. You can almost now never say Microsoft doesn't have games, mm-hmm. which is pretty crazy, because because I said that all the time. Now they have plenty of studios making a lot of things, so I can't say anything anymore. Yeah, people always say they're like, oh, they don't have they don't have uh, they don't have any games. I mean, <laughs> look, they have everything now. It's pretty insane. Alex, mm. I'm gonna end it with one more question. Mm-hmm. Not really a question, more of a news slash update on something. CG Project Red did announce earlier this week that they are having to mandatory crunch before the uh-huh. game launches. Didn't they have a delay already? Yeah, so they delayed and they also have to crunch to get the game ready. So apparently the game is golden, as in it's it, like it's in a playable state, but it's to quash bugs. Mm. What is your opinion on crunch? That's a very open-winded statement, but essentially they're making their employees work six days a week till the end of the year. The game doesn't sound gold. 
<laughs> I know, right? It doesn't sound cool, but that's what that's apparently the rumor is what it is. Um, would you pref- do? You, are you fine with a crunch, or would you prefer a delay for a few months? Mm, I prefer a delay. Okay. Because uh, if you're crunching everything, people are being overworked, and then they're gonna rush things and not actually get it done accor- uh, accordingly. Yeah. And I feel like it can cause more problems. Yeah, that's a good. Mind. That's a good point. I never thought about it that way. I'm I'm of the mind of I don't honestly care what they do. Um, because apparently yeah, I mean, I, that's, that's why I was like I I'd rather delay them, but like cause I could wait because it doesn't bother it, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. I, I I there's a lot of hubbub on Twitter. This is the only reason I ask Alex. A lot of people complaining, whining, on both sides that you know hey, the employees are overworked. Blah blah blah. You know, I I never want to hear from people that don't know the situation. A lot of people mm-hmm. giving their two cents on things they don't know about. Um, mm-hmm. I would prefer to hear from a developer that is working there that is saying that these conditions they're working in are unsuitable to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, um, they're in Poland. Um, they're getting paid over time and they're getting paid a certain percentage of each sale too so they're getting paid heavily for this so as until i hear something comfortably from the actual dev speaking to me or uh, uh, jason schreier or someone like that that i have honestly no opinion on the matter i doubt anyone's handcuffed to their desk over there um i don't think anyone's being forced to do anything so that's my opinion. I just want to do a quick touch on that. Alex, mm. we end every single show with a little look at what's in the beyond. This is what we call queued up. This is something we may be excited to do. Could be a TV show, a game show, a video game, and or comic or book. Alex, what's queued up for the week? Um... Well, I'm finishing up the boys. Oh yes, I, I I'm caught up. The new episode just went live, I believe. How did it? I think so. I think I think they just went live or whatever. But it is live. I might watch it before bed tonight. Oh, um, very, sorry. very exciting. I love the boys. Yeah, so good. Um, so messed up, but I love it. Um, I'm thinking about going back to Last of Us to finally finish that platinum because I've been pl- I've been um I've been racking on the plats la- this last week. Yeah, you've been platinum crazy, right? Yeah, I've got, I've done. I finished God of War. I finished Spider Man. Days Gone. Um, and so now I, I feel like I need to do Last of Us because I'm I literally only have two two trophies left, but I, it requires you to pretty much play the whole game again. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm just I'm slowly pitching away at it. So I'll do like a mission like every day and then go play something else. Right. I think, not that I not that I don't like the game. I just uh, I've already played it and I'm yeah. not in the mood for it right now. Yeah, you're not in the mood of the a specific tone, so you're missing out on the, the actual experience. I get it. I've done yeah. that plenty of times. I am going to go play some Fortnite. I'm trying to catch up on the season. Oh, um, I'm, so yeah, I'm trying to get certain challenges, things, and then like that. I'm playing with my wife probably. If you want to, Alex, you can join us. But after we're done with that, I'm probably going to switch mm-hmm. up to some Destiny. Do a few things I have left for the week and. Oh, mm-hmm. that'll be a. Yeah, and I'm trying to get to tier hundred on that too. And that'll be a Thursday I'm wrapped up there. for me. Yeah, you're almost there. Almost there. In Destiny, not Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in Destiny. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that I'm... is what we have queued up. That's yeah, just more Destiny. Just more Destiny, more Fortnite. Nothing too exciting. Nothing quite out yet. I'm probably gonna buy Star Wars Squadrons. When is that? Tomorrow. Oh God, is it? Yeah, it's oh. tomorrow. Oh, interesting. Yep. <laughs> all right yeah so i'll probably i'll probably buy that maybe today maybe tomorrow i don't know might see if there is some codes leaking about not sure yet yeah uh yeah i'm debating i might get it I, I i know i'll like it so it's not a question of liking it's a question of do i want to play it i know yeah, that seems that's contradictory I'm, but i'm very interested in the story i've yeah, just never been in yeah. a, a dog, dog fighting type of yeah, game. I have, but it looks to the point where it might be too much for me. Yeah, and see, I've always tried Ace Combat and all them, and it was just too much for me. Yeah. That is us for the week. Thank you again for joining us. We love talking to you as much as you like listening. If you like us, remember we have Twitters. You can tweet us any question, comments, concerns, thoughts, and or ideas. What did you think of the show? What did you think of the Series X impre- uh, impressions we gave? 
what do you think of our bungee acquisition thoughts? Remember, you can tweet us any, anything. If you want a more direct feed straight to our eyeballs, we will read any question you DM us on the show, patreon.com slash EGGivers. Just give us a buck and then utilize their private messaging service to get in contact with us, and I will read it above onto the show to your ears. Remember, freeloaders, you go over to podcast service and or YouTube every week. Give us a like. Give us the comment. Five stars. Anyone or all of them if you want to go the extra mile. Thank you for listening. Thanks for joining. Remember. Remember.